Hello and welcome to the inside of the latest Subaru Outback. I'm excited to tell you all about this car. I've been driving it for over a week now around Johannesburg and I have learned many things. But before we get started, I just want to direct you to the description below where there is a link to all of the Subarus listed on our website. We have over 150 to choose from and the cheapest one starts at 27,900 Rand. Interesting. Cars.coza Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to. Right, so let's start with what is this thing? Subaru Legacy used to be a sort of sport wagon. Now it's morphed into this kind of off-road SUV and they've even dropped the Legacy name. So this is just the Outback. Under the bonnet, boxer motor, symmetrical all-wheel drive. It has all the hallmarks of a Subaru, but it's definitely more orientated for adventure, for lifestyle, for families. And for me, it occupies a fairly unique position in the market because it's not really a natural rival to say a Mazda CX-5, although they're very similarly priced. It's not really a rival to say a BMW X3, although they are similarly sized. So it is this very unique proposition in the market. But in my opinion, it has almost the perfect blend of all the things you would want in a vehicle like this and while it is very much set up for adventuring and gravel roads and a bit of light 4x4ing I've been driving this car around Johannesburg and for me this is almost the perfect city vehicle now I know that sounds very strange but hear me out so what do you deal with when you're driving around Johannesburg potholes this car has basically been designed to do 120 k's an hour on crappy gravel roads across the Australian outback. It's not what you would describe as fragile. And so it takes the Johannesburg roads in its stride with ease, with absolute aplomb. Love that word, aplomb. I've never worked it into a review. I'm glad I, glad I got it in. Genuinely, the suspension is fantastic in this car. I would almost describe it as cloud-like. You'd be forgiven, speed bump. You'd almost be forgiven for thinking that you had air suspension in here. That's how good it is, but you don't have to pay for the air suspension and you don't have to pay for it when it breaks, which are two massive bonuses to air suspension. Under the bonnet, 2.5 litre four cylinder boxer motor. Now, boxer motors are renowned for being a little bit thirsty. This one has been tweaked. Just went over some nasty bumps there, no problem. This one has been tweaked for efficiency. So they've managed to get the average fuel consumption to around seven liters to 100. Now, in my experience, you have to try pretty hard to achieve that, but it is possible. The engine outputs are 138 kilowatts and 245 newton meters, which is not huge, but Subaru say that this still will tow a two-ton braked trailer. Speedbump. Wow, filming in the suburbs is very exciting. <laughs> All of that power goes through a CVT Lineatronic gearbox. Now, Subaru are very good at CVTs. They actually license the technology to other manufacturers on the quiet, don't tell them I told you that. 
The benefit of CVT is efficiency, but one of the downsides is it's not as nice to drive or as smooth to drive as, say, a traditional auto. But all you really have to do is adjust your driving style slightly to match the CVT, and then you will get the best out of it. It does become, there's a pothole there, does become a pleasant driving experience. But if you want to take over, there are eight sort of fake gear ratios which you can control via the flappy paddles on the steering wheel. Welcome to the interior of the Subaru Outback and I love this new generation interior. Everywhere you look, there is just something nice to look at. It feels very plush. There's soft touch leather all over the place with nice contrast stitching. And of course, center stage here is this big portrait orientated touch screen. All of your connectivity that you would expect is in here, but there are some extra cool little bits and pieces. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, those are standard. And you control things like your heated seats and your climate control over here as well. So you just slide up like that for your climate. Of course there are buttons for it, physical buttons, and I like what they've done. Combination of touch screen and physical buttons because you know muscle memory just makes it easier to work with volume knobs and that sort of thing. But there are lots of little tricks in here as well. So for instance if you go to car info, and maintenance it tells you when your next oil change is required when your next service is required so you don't miss it so the dealer doesn't take away your warranty but one of the key pieces of technology in here and i have not seen it in any other brand of car is facial recognition but used in a very very clever way now we're all quite used to facial recognition because our cell phones have had it for a long time but the Subaru takes it one step further. Now, what it does is once it learns your face and you store your driver profile and you store your seat settings and you store your mirror position, then when you get back in the car, well, let me, let me just rather show you. So I'm gonna mess up my seat position. Okay, that's messed up enough. Right, then I have to get out, lock the car. So allow me to do that quickly. Justin, close the door there. <coughs> Okay, locking the car and go. Okay, open your door. Then when I get in, it's going to immediately recognize my face and put the car back to how I need it. it says, hello, Chiro. And here comes my seat. I love that. I didn't have to do anything. It just recognized me, greeted me, and then set up the car as I needed it. It will also do the climate control for you as well. That is some seriously smart tech. A couple of more highlights for me inside the cabin. Absolutely mega sound system, phenomenal sound system. These seats are great, really, really well designed, good support and very, very comfy as well. They're also heated as standard, which you control in here when the car is on. The steering wheel is heated as well. Down here, two USB ports and a auxiliary jack. There's a whole suite of cameras. Let me turn on the car so I can show you those. So if you put it into reverse, you obviously get a reverse camera, but if you hit this view button down here, you get a curb cam on the left wheel, so you don't curb your wheel, and you get a front view as well. So that's very, very smart. And then, I don't, do you have CDs still? I don't have CDs anymore. I had to go look for some in a flea market when I bought an old car. But if you do have CDs, you'll be glad to know that there is a CD player as standard. Oh, is that where they are? I've been looking for these. Anyone have a knife? Guy's got a knife on you. Anyone? No? Okay. We'll just eat one at a time. Like, we'll st I'll start. The back seating area of the Outback. <laughs> See what I did there.
That was terrible. Cut. The back seating area. Now, because you have procreated or you have dogs or both, you'll be very interested in these. Rubber matting all the way around the car. Very easy to clean. But as my director has just pointed out, because he's the only one here who has kids, if they could invent that for that, that would really, really help. Apparently, I don't know anything about this. But for your kids, you've got two USB ports down here, so they don't argue about who gets to charge their devices. Independent rear air vents as well, but not independent aircon control. In here, two drinks holders, but you also have drinks holders in the door. And very comfy seating with very good knee room. I'm pretty impressed by that. Now, as standard, you get keyless entry around the car, but the boots is also keyless. Now, a lot of manufacturers have implemented something like this, but it usually involves swinging your foot around underneath the car, which in my experience never really works and you also look like a bit of a doing it. But all Subaru have done to solve this problem is put a sensor in the badge. So as long as you have the key in your pocket and you just hold your hand near the badge, it'll beep telling you it's registered and then the tailgate opens. How smart is that? Love it. And the rest of the boot is pretty smart too. I always love when manufacturers put remote release for the back seats. Whapang! Look at that. Sprung loaded, spring loaded, sprung action. Something of that description. Underneath here is a decent size spare and all over the back of the boot, there are little shopping hooks and tie downs and that sort of thing to keep everything in place. There's also a 12 volt socket to run an electrical appliance. Then to close the boot, you have a choice of two buttons. You can either lock the car straight away or just close it. So I'm gonna lock it. Because if you don't have, ah, oh, floof, hello. You see, the dog was attracted to the Subaru. Dogs love Subarus, they really do. But if you don't have something in your hand, then you can do some really great Dr. Strange to open your boot. I can cast a spell on this <laughs> Love that. I wouldn't get tired of that, ever. Not only do <laughs> Not only do these roof racks look good, but they're also very, very smart. So they're tucked away on this side, but if you just unclip them, Ditter, pass me that one, then you get parallel bars. Look at that. And they'll take up to 68 kilograms, evenly distributed, and they are extra holes, so you can create extra distance between the two bars. I mean, if you had to buy this on the aftermarket, that would be pretty expensive. Now this car really is a tech fest on wheels and a lot of that technology is in the area of active and passive safety. So the entire shell of the car has been redesigned. It's Subaru's most rigid chassis ever. It's also been designed to incorporate more and better crumple zones so it performs better in accidents. But the car tries very hard to keep you from having an accident in the first place. So you've got adaptive cruise control with automatic braking. You've got pedestrian detection with automatic braking. It will even put in some steering inputs for you if it needs to. Blind spot monitoring lane keep assist, lane center keep assist as well, and forward detection cameras which are always on. And one thing they do which I really, really like is if you're sitting in a robot and maybe you're not paying attention and the car in front of you moves away, then a little thing will pop up in front of you and it'll beep slightly and it'll say the car ahead has moved so that you don't sit there like this at the traffic light holding up all the cars behind you. That's a nice touch. I haven't seen that in any other cars. And then in terms of active protection, there are eight airbags in this car, more than almost any other car in South Africa, including curtain airbags and an innovative new airbag in the passenger footwell, which prevents the passenger's legs from moving around too much in the case of an accident. So overall, you've got lots of systems to help you avoid an incident in the first place, but if the worst happens, you are very well protected in this car. Speed up. 
Now let's get into the pricing. That's probably what you've all been waiting for. So there are two models of Subaru Outback available, the Field and the Touring. The Field starts at $699, the Touring is at $749. Now, you might be thinking, $750, that's quite a lot of money for this car. But it really isn't. The market has moved so much. So the nearest RAV4 to this car, for instance, Toyota RAV4, is only about 20,000 cheaper and the nearest Mazda CX-5 is pretty close to that as well. But using the really cool compare tool on the free cars.co's app, I've gone through the spec sheets of all of these cars and quite simply the Subaru Outback has more spec than any of its rivals. And where there is extra value as well is where the Mazda and the Toyota only offer three-year warranties. In the Subaru, you get a five-year. So there's some extra value packaged in to that purchase price. And also everything I'm talking about in this video, everything you're going to see me point at or activate, it's all standard. There is so much standard equipment. It's not like when you go and buy a German car and you're reading down a list and it just says optional, 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 and you just have to tick and tick and then the price just goes up and up and just gets more and more painful. How bad this intersection is. There's like six potholes in a row. Just sails over all of them. Gosh, driving at Joburg is such a different experience. When I come up to Johannesburg, it is like visiting another country. I know when Joburgers come to Cape Town, they also think they're visiting another country, but it works both ways. So this may sound strange, but a car that I want to compare this to is the BMW X3. Now, it's about the same size, roughly, but this car has a bigger boot. But it's 200,000 Rand cheaper than the cheapest petrol X3 that you can buy, which is the 2 litre. 200 grand, it's about 939 as standard for a petrol X3. And this car absolutely wipes the floor with the X3 in terms of standard specification. I mean, if you go down the comparison tool, in our app it's just everything's optional in the x3s adaptive cruise control you don't get it heated seats you don't get it. you have to pay extra for a panoramic roof for instance you're going to be well over a million rand if you try and match the spec of this car with your x3 but you might be saying to yourself well i live a more urban lifestyle i don't necessarily need to adventure out into the wild but that is what this car is built for. After you've driven something like this and then you get into an X3, the X3 actually feels quite fragile. It's not the sort of car that you want to go do hundreds of kilometers on dirt roads in. And that's what this is built for. That's what this car specializes in. And one of the reasons why I think this car can be fairly compared to something like an X3 is because I feel like Subaru have done a great job of making this car's interior feel very luxurious. I think it can compete with the best of the Germans. It also feels very modern with this giant portrait touchscreen in front of me. But overall, the cabin just has a wonderful feeling of quality and premium, 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 premiumness to it. <laughs> but as much as it is an adventure vehicle, I go back to my earlier point that this is a superb vehicle to live with in the city. You know, if I was into procreating or owning herds of dogs, this is a car that would be very high on my shopping list. It just does everything well. In my opinion, Subaru have pulled off something of a magic trick here. This car is just about the perfect blend of adventure vehicle, practical family car, comfortable city run around, and luxurious SUV. And that's pretty damn impressive. Right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, why not uh, whack that like and subscribe button? And um, if you're new to the channel, we have over 570 videos. I think I've actually lost count, if I'm honest, but tons of reviews and drag races and adventure films, and you'll definitely find something that you'll enjoy. My name's Chiro de Siena, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. All right, be safe. 
Do you like clothes? I do. This is available right now on our sentimental shop. Just go to kazakoza forward slash shop or look for the description in the link below. <laughs> See what I did there. Just trying to catch you out. And we've got tons of exclusive merchandise which is designed and made exclusively for our store. I said exclusive twice because it's very exclusive. Also hats. Cars.coza.